we're really just here to celebrate uh, this beautiful book. I mean, I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You've just done, you know, so well to have it. You know, it's just absolutely amazing. And it's been one of the best books. So we work with writers all over the world, our business called Indie Authors World. And I get the pleasure of helping make people's dreams come true. And this has been a really special project for me to work on as well. It is, uh, so, you know, you've done. <laughs> Am I going to say why? Okay, I'll say why. Um, that Tracy and I found out that we have something in common and that um, I also lost a child. My son, um, Callum, died when he was 12 years old. And it's actually why our business exists. Because we got into publishing by accident and um, it was because my husband decided that life was too short not to write a book. And then people started to ask us for help. And here we are. 11 years, 12 years later, um, helping um, lots of other people's dreams come true. So it's really special for me that we actually get to work with Tracy and we put a book out there in the world. So we kind of reckon that maybe Callum and Cora had got together <laughs> to make sure this book was actually going to come out there. So we'll say thank you to both of yes, them, perhaps, before we, before we really kind of start. So, um, okay, thank you. So, um, what I want to do is before we start, we read you um, the, the blurb from the back of the book, just to, um, to tell you what. So we can't always see or feel her, but she's there. She is the shining light in our hearts forever. The shining light in our hearts depicts, gently depicts the presence of a deceased child in a family's life, encouraging children to remember and honour the loss of a child during the grieving process and replacing the negative thoughts and feelings associated with death and grief with a beautiful hope and a focus on magical remembrance. It's perfect for families to share with children. This picture book offers grown-ups a heartwarming and simple way to discuss and support young children through death and grief, helping children understand that death is a natural part of the life cycle and that grief is a normal emotion to experience. So. All right, hope, don't worry. <laughs> so. Um, losing your child is probably one of the worst things that can ever happen in your life. But I didn't want people to think that that's what life is, that life is hope and it's good and it's positive and you can rebuild your life and you can make it much more positive. I feel like I'm a much stronger person, I have a lot more to give to other people because of what happened to me. And I want to share that story because when I went along to Compassionate Friends when I lived in Glasgow, the self-help support group. I saw women, and it was only women that came to that group, it wasn't men, and I was a huge worry about men and not being able to um, express their grief, but I watched women who were completely broken, who GPs had just given them every drug to shut them up and to get them out of their practice. And I just thought, I'm not going down that road. I want a positive life. And I want to be able to share my experience with others and to give them hope. Because when you're down at the bottom of that hole and it's so dark, you need people to help and pull you out. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to write this book for Jeannie and Robbie yeah. because they didn't know their sister yeah. physically. But I wanted them to know that they were as much part of her life and them part of her life mm -hmm. and I didn't want them to grow up in the shadow thinking that I loved their sister more or that they couldn't talk about her and that she wasn't part of our family so yeah. Yeah. I always had loads of photographs up and I would take them down to three babies. Jane never wanted to sit still anyway <laughs> and just show them um, their sister and talk to them about their sister. Yeah. And I, and I understand that so much because I think um, anyone who, I think if you've lost a child, the worst thing that can happen is that people don't talk yes. about them. Yes. And often we don't do that with people because we're, we're scared of the emotion that's going to come up. You know, you actually, people are scared yes. of if I, if I say something or say the wrong thing and you're going to get upset. Yeah. And the reality is though, we get upset anyway. Yes. Um, and, and the other thing is just about them being forgotten yes. and that's the thing that's the thing that's, for me certainly yes. I know I think it's been the same for you that being able to talk about yes. our children yes. who are no longer physically yes. here yes. 
and that's what the, one of the most beautiful things that you've done with this book is be able to share that and share that story and particularly with your two children yeah. who are yeah. also here tonight yeah. you wrote the story such a long time did uh -huh. you actually read it as it's written just now to, to Janie and Rory? yes and actually <clears throat> I asked Janie what she thought about about the book and she said it'll be lovely when it's got lots of lovely coloured and rainbows in it and then that's where yeah. Jennifer yeah. fits in <laughs> so yeah I, and I and I knew that myself but yeah definitely I, I read the book to, to the two of them that was lovely um, and that's the thing is that how much <coughs> so how much did the beautiful illustrations that Jennifer did help bring bring that to life for well, you <laughs> like Jennifer, Jennifer, without Jennifer's illustrations, the book is half empty. Yeah. When, yeah. You, when you put Jennifer's <laughs> illustrations together with the words, it's like the most perfect harmony for me. Yeah. And Jennifer has captured the essence of what I wanted people to yeah. feel, and she's described it in the most beautiful way. Yeah. And Jennifer's like my dearest friend, but she's also, the, the, I couldn't think of anybody that I would want to be sharing tonight with. Yeah. Because yeah. I love her to bits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. And, I, and as the person who helped publish it, can I also say, I work with a lot of people, we see lots of illustrations, and that's what's made this book so special because your work is absolutely beautiful and it really did bring this, it really did bring this so much to the fore. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think you, you deserve so much credit for helping us put this book together and it's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, lots of tears, I don't know what we're like. <laughs> I wanted just to ask then, what, what do you hope that the message in this book can do for other people? Well, it isn't just that I, loss is so, multifaceted and people suffer loss every single day in their lives for all sorts of different reasons. So the book isn't just about the death of a child, it's about how we how we continue and how we find hope again and how we see the, the joy in nature and seeing a rainbow or seeing the sunshine or seeing your children walk through the door. Yeah. Or you know, and all the love I get from my friends and my family, I mean, all of these things have given me such great hope and a joy to be alive. Yes, yeah, yeah. So we live in that joy in spite of the grief. Yes. That's the thing, isn't yes. it? Yeah. My, my thing was always, I said that I would live my life well to honour my son. Yes, yeah, definitely. And, that that's, and I think that's where, um, that we have that kindred yes. spirit yes. of trying to focus yes. on the joy. Yes. Um, and not on the empty yeah. space yeah. that could be there that, yeah. that some people find really difficult yeah. and that's what I think for me your book <coughs> offers a simple way for people perhaps to look at this and, and find a little bit of hope yes 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 and that's and that's to the testament of you and from the love of God yes. Mm. yes isn't it so um so has the connection with her changed over over this because it's you know it's a long time since she since she passed do you, you feel mean the, 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 the connection that you feel with with cora and has that does that feel as if that has changed over time um in terms of how you do you still think of her as that young be you know that no. young child or how do you how do you think i mean i think her? initially i did i would have sold myself sold to the devil yeah <laughs> i'd have lived in a tent for the rest of my life in absolute yeah. squalor yeah. i could have got my daughter back yeah. Uh, physically, that loss was just unbearable. But now I don't. And now I just see her as a free spirit, like in the book. I see her as a robin. Yep. I see her as a rainbow. Yep. I see her as a wee snowdrop. I see her as, you know, a beautiful sweet pea and smell it, or a, a rose, or just see her. She's yep. everywhere in nature. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then that whole cycle of life and death, because yep. things grow and things die. Yep. And no matter how much we might try and nourish them and nurture them, sometimes they die. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's the that's the, the work that I know that you are keen to continue doing yeah. is get more people talking about the fact that yeah, mm -hmm. you know, we're 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 generally not very good at dealing with kind of death and grief no. and emotion. 
you know. So yeah. So we're sitting up here, emotional women sitting together. Yeah, <laughs> so emotional room. But yeah, we're generally not that great at dealing no. with emotion. And no. um, and I know that you're going to go on and just you know, even from doing more talks about yeah. this, yeah. it will reach other people. And yes. hopefully even from tonight, that you know, if you can go on from here yeah. and share a little bit of a story and some of it, and maybe you're talking about the stories of the people that are still that maybe are no longer in your lives. Because like I said, it's yeah. not always just about no. it's not about a no. but no. No, we've been there. So what's next for you then, Tracy? Mm -hmm. um, after next? after you finish <coughs> off all the wine and the canopies, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I like to think that I live my life to the full and I give of myself mm -hmm. in a very in the truest way I possibly can. I'm very honest. I mean, sometimes I've been called gobernistic before. <laughs> 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 Please go up in a stick, I'll be it. I think I just want, I would like to do more work around with people about, like just talking more to people about the loss and grief they feel yeah. mm -hmm. and like turning, you know, having a part to play in easing and helping people's lives when it, it's really at the pits and to just give them hope. So I would like to do more of that. I would like to be out there doing more of that, yeah. definitely. There's a, there's, the message still needs to be heard so strongly because there, it's, I mean, one of the reasons why the book wasn't written was because, uh, published initially was because people said it's lovely book that we don't publish books like that. It's like, yeah, that's why I even wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, if I thought the message, if, the, if I thought everyone got the message, then we wouldn't be needing to talk but about it. But we, do, yeah. but we yeah. do need to get that message out there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And, and for people to to really see that their life, you know, I felt like Humpty Dumpty. I fell off the wall and I did not have a clue how to put myself back together again, yeah. but I did. You did. And mm -hmm. I want other people to know that you can. You can. Yeah. You can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's not about putting a brave face no. on and plastering a smile no. and pretending. No. It's as you said tonight, it is about being honest yeah. and being real yeah. and and actually sometimes that means that you sit with those emotions yeah. and you cry yeah. and yeah. you know and, and then we get friends along and they give us a hug and then we end up laughing because yes. you can, that's the thing is that you can cry and laugh within yeah. the same few minutes. Yeah. Um, and it's not, it's not always just no. that you know, <coughs> no. so, no. and I know that you're going to do some great things with this. Thank you. Yeah. And together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's like we have yeah. We've got, we've got, yeah, we've got a whole team up there going like, come on, you pair, right? You got, come on, come on, you can do it. So, um, I would like to ask Robbie a few questions, if that's okay. Did you want? Oh, she's going to you. I suppose when you grow up with a sibling that is obviously spoken about, you know, Cora's been spoken about, but you didn't get a chance to meet her. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, what, what was that like for you growing up? Um, I mean, it's hot, it's very hard because she's sort of negative space. Like you were talking about, she's there and she's such a big presence, but she's also not there. Yeah, yeah. And I think in some ways she was unknowable and that's why how mum has lived her life and the book and the way that she brought us up is really poignant and beautiful because she's made her you know noble to us she's introduced us to her and you know we've been able to through mum and through the book and through all the people that mum has you know helped in her life uh -huh, yeah. that's all in sort of Cora's name yeah and yeah. so it's like both the sort of the darkness and the light it's the most desperately sad thing mm -hmm. that could ever happen but it has also led mum to be one of the most compassionate women you know yeah. that i'll ever meet and yes i'm just saying that because it's mum but also i <laughs> truly believe it yeah. uh -huh. and i think yeah. anyone who's met her yeah. would you know echo that yeah she's yeah. how much did i have to pay to say <laughs> 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yeah. And I think the, um, I think what has been lovely is that Socorro's name has 
because she's, you, you've talked about her then and she's been part of your, your lives. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a kind of similar situation with our family with Callum that um, you know, he's still very much part of our lives and people come in and they then find out about him even if we could mm -hmm. have met friends and, and people that didn't know anything about him. Mm -hmm. So if you were, was it difficult though if somebody asked you or you met new people to, to raise her name in their company or was it something because it had come and it had been naturally just part of, mm -hmm. of your growing up? I mean, I think because mum was always so open about it, yeah. I've tried to be as open about it with others as I can be. I mean, sometimes you know that someone will hear, hear and feel what you're saying and yeah. that you can share. Yeah. And sometimes you know that maybe you're not going to share it with them at that present moment and you're waiting for the right time. But, you know, anyone who I would invite into our home, mm -hmm. you know, I would know that they would be someone that would, yeah. would see Cora for who she was and would understand what mum had gone through and, and how fundamental that has been to our life. Yeah, yeah. And that she, she said that she's still very much a part of your family, even though you never got the chance to meet her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, and do you feel that you have got to know her? I or, mean, or, it's, it's a strange one, mm -hmm. isn't it? You know, just to, I mean, I feel like I know exactly who Cora was to mum and yeah. everything that she meant to mum yeah. and you know I know like I see her more as an angel you know as like yeah. a, as a cherub yeah. and like she feels deeply like my sister but I'll never obviously know her like mum knew her but yeah. I know just how important she was to mum and um, and like I say how that is rippled and you know created something I think so beautiful and from such a dark place and yeah. I think that's what this book and what Jennifer's illustrations have helped to do as well like when we would like some of my earliest memories would be of hearing about you know these these rainbows yeah. and the robin and these really really poignant meaningful symbols of yes. Cora's life yeah. and and the love that sort of cocooned us and yeah. You know, protected us from the world and and bonded us and brought yeah. us together. Yeah, and that then opens up, I suppose, maybe your your growth and your upbringing that you then were kind of able to look for those sort of things. You know, and that that you know that most most children growing up, you know, we we try to protect them from anything mm -hmm. like that. I mean, we don't talk about that sort of spiritual aspect of that, you know, there's, there's something mm -hmm. really value. Mm -hmm. And I know just the, the, the short time that we've had to spend, you know, yeah. time getting to know you, how much I think that that, for me, that seems to have been a very fundamental part of your own, mm -hmm. your own personality then. And yeah. you, you opened up the world to mm -hmm. you in a different way. Do you think, is that I is think that like something? I, fundamentally see God in nature and yeah, see, yeah. you know, everything in the sort of cycles of life and death and rebirth that, yeah. that nature brings and yeah. that brings me great solace and I think it's because of these symbols and the significance of, you know, the plants and the flowers yeah. and, you know, the, the just the beautiful moments of magic but also the, the sort of almighty wrath and power that nature holds over us as well and I think that's obviously because you know the robin yeah. and, and the rainbow and you know the sun and the stars and all of that was so so important and such a sort of potent symbol for Cora's life that, yeah. that is sort of carried carried forward yeah. for me. So I think for me what it really shows is that that Cora's love actually still comes through from you, from Janie, you know from all the family. Cora's short life has always loomed so large in ours and I have such vivid memories of this book that was read to us as wee bairns, through which we were able to better comprehend not just the depths of our mum's grief, but the joy Cora's precious life brought to hers too. Most importantly, we got to know our sister. The book's message, along with Jennifer's beautiful illustrations, portrays so vividly all the joy and sorrow only the bereaved can know and will bring solace, comfort, and understanding to so many now that mum is finally sending it out into the world. 
that this book was the result of the generosity of so many people seems fitting too, given the extraordinary number of people that my mum has comforted and supported with her boundless compassion through her life. Through her words, mum has now given Cora wings. Here's to her sister, to my mum's first daughter, to everyone we've loved and lost. Here's to the light shining in our hearts. Where, where do you think then that strength came from for you? Because you're saying about being able to actually then speak out and, yeah. and, and do some more work with us. Where do you think that strength actually comes from from yourself? Um, my love for my children, um, my love for my family, my love for my friends. Um, and I think, I think when you choose the path, the positive, hopeful path, you get given strength. I feel like I got strength from above um, that's helped me at times when I felt I couldn't go on and so I call on that strength and like my wee angels by my side um, and of course is one of my wee angels um, as is my mum mm -hmm. um, although she's a bigger angel <laughs> um, but yeah I mean I think I, I don't I, I couldn't pin, I think it just I found the strength. I don't. I don't know where. I couldn't exactly say where that all came from. Yeah, yeah. But there's been a lot of there's there's a, a, a beautiful sense of the kind of spiritual connection yeah. to Cora throughout the yeah. book, and and yeah. and that in nature, you know, that's the thing about yes. what's around us yes. all the time. Yes. And there were so many you know signs and things that you actually yes. were able to kind of tune into. What has it been that's, you know, what, what are there particular ones that are still really prominent for you that then, that you see something and it really yeah. helps you to, to connect and think about? Robins. Robins, yeah. 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 Ro and feathers. Robins. Robin feathers aren't in the book, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like, I always, yeah, robins always just appear. Yeah. And they'll trot down beside me. And then last year I had a robin um, it started off during the fish and I wasn't giving it any whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> but Janie and Robbie and their pals were up and it, it, was start, it was hovering about in the garden and sitting on the fence. It was like it was listening to conversations and then when they went away, it was like coming into my house. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he'd be sitting outside the house waiting for me in the morning to come in and get his food. Um, so yeah, I love Robins. And I've yeah. got a wee corner at front in, in my house, it's my Robin corner with um, all the wee robins, not yep. real ones. Because <laughs> that one buggered off, I don't know. <laughs> I, I lost them, I lost them. But I had them. You had them? I had them, yeah. And it, it's, it's those signs um, that some people might dismiss. Yeah. Um, and, and other people are, so, are totally into it. Yeah. But when you do, when you see a robin, and when, and I, I mean, I know from experience as well that, that the grief, the grief never leaves you. Yeah. I describe it for me that um, I managed to knit a, a cover for the hole in my heart. Yes. So it's still there, yes. but that but, but yes. you've got a cover. Yes. And there's times when things still happen throughout our lives yes. that it becomes a little more open again. Yes. And so have you have you been aware then that those robins are you know something still come to yes. you when, when you feel yes. that you need it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I and, get that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I know, I feel like, um, I mean, Cora's on her, on her next part of her journey. Yeah. But the connection between the two of us is so strong that I know that when she needs us, she comes and actually, my sister had a stroke a few weeks ago and she phoned tonight and she's going, leaving the hospital tomorrow. And she's got one of Cora's wee teddies and she said, Cora's been by my side all the time, been in the hospital, and she's what's getting me out of the hospital. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so that connection with anybody that we've lost, um, we don't really need to lose them. No, they're <laughs> not lost. They're not lost. They're always there. Yeah, yeah. It's whether you choose to recognise and see them or not. I yeah, think. yeah, yeah. And sometimes that allowing in, yeah. um, is it, it does sometimes bring the, the loss to the fore yes. that, that are physically not there in yes. our presence yeah but that for me i would say that love that love never dies no, no. that love is is there and i say even sometimes stronger, stronger. Yeah. 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 yeah yeah um and 
see this tonight. It's liquid love. Yes. Right? That's what it is. It's liquid love. And that's the thing for me, that grief is, it's the, the tears are then because the love at that point you feel as if there's nowhere for it to go. Yes. And that's where that, that grief yes. becomes you know, heavy. Yes. But you've been able to, to really to tune into the love of Cora so that she's yes. always around yes. you. Yes. And that's so evident in, yeah. in this book. Yeah. You know, so. yeah. I mean, I think initially the physical loss of your child is so great that yeah. it's, you can't, I can't even put any of that into words. But now she's in my heart. Yeah. And she'll be in my heart forever. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where to go, she's always there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they do come along for the good things too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm quite sure. Come on, I don't know if mum. Come on. This book is called The Light Shining in Our Hearts. And it was most beautifully illustrated by my dearest friend Jennifer Gillis. Who wrote that? <laughs> Some fanny. <laughs> so, so, where's the jar? Where's the spirit jar? So, um, mm. this book is dedicated to my children, Janie and Robbie, and my mum, Patsy, and um, to Connor Clapton. Um, that's a long story that I'm not going to go into tonight. So, it's also in memory of my daughter who shows me the light, and written on her gravestone, something that my mum um, gave to me was. Behold thy daughter, she hath the wind in her hands. And that's what we were talking about, is that my daughter's in the wind, she's here, there, and everywhere. So, Cora was a very happy wee girl. You melted into her big blue eyes. She loved being alive. Her invisible touch reached right into your heart. Her squeals of delight filled you with warmth and love and joy. Love given freely and shared with all she met. Cora lived in the park. One of her favourite times is when she took her dog Dougal for a walk there. She loved to watch him run for sticks. He never brought them back. He never did what mummy said. And where's Derek Pierce? Because <laughs> Derek, please say what you said earlier about the four dogs that I've had. What there was on the table. <laughs> <laughs> a challenge. None, none, none of them were trained. Let's just put it that way. She loved to play with her best friends. Their names were Fiona, Ian and Julie. She loved to play in the cupboards. She loved to read her books. She loved to eat. And she loved to watch the blue tits eat the coconut from the tree. One day she had to go to hospital. She was very ill and mummy and daddy felt very sad. The doctors told them that Cora could come home to die. Mummy and daddy felt happy because Cora could come back to her own house. Cora knew she was home. She heard the blue tits singing on the windowsill and she smelled the freezer beside her bed and she felt Dougal lick her face. Then one day she died. Mummy and Daddy cried and cried and cried inside and out, and they thought they had lost Cora forever. All of her family and friends missed her so much and everything felt empty. The world looked different and time went on and on. One day, Julie and Ian went to the park to play on the swings and Cora was there too, and she danced among the leaves. Mummy never saw her, she was so blinded she saw nothing, but Ian and Julie knew she was there. Fiona cried one day because the clouds stopped her seeing Cora. She let her balloon fly up into the sky and it was for Cora to play with. Everyone thought of Cora, rippers of her love were felt everywhere. Mummy and Daddy felt Cora inside their hearts and the light shone through. The white light of the candle brought love. Janie was born as if a butterfly of hope was blossoming. Soon after, Robbie arrived like an angel from the skies. Life and laughter filled the house and Dougal still did what suited him best. <laughs> Cora's life taught mummy and daddy how precious Janie and Robbie are and how precious all life is. When Janie and Robbie and the friends go to the park to play, Cora is there. She is the wind that flies the kite. She is a robin singing on the fence. She is a swallow gliding through the air on a summer's evening. And she is a pure white snowdrop peeping through the frosty ground. 
She's the purple crocus bursting open. She's the sun glistening on the sea. She's the pink blossom that carpets the grove. She's the midnight light in the sky on a clear night. And when you look up at the moon and stars, Cora is there. She is your friend by your side forever and ever. She plays with you, watches over you, and helps you when you need her. Her love is every colour and shade of the rainbow she sends you. Some days, Mummy and Daddy miss her. It hurts not to be able to hold her and watch her grow. But Janie and Robbie know Cora, and Cora knows Janie and Robbie. We can't always see or feel her, but she's there. She's the light shining in our hearts forever. Our love never dies, is unden unending, and the gift of life is always here. Thank you.